So the topic of testosterone, I'm going to put that on hold for a couple episodes because it's complicated. I'm doing some research on micronutrients and minerals and how they affect testosterone and it's almost overwhelming. So I want to be able to break that down simply for you guys. And in the meantime, I really want to talk about pipes, water pipes in your home because I've been replacing water pipes and I'm using these copper pipes because the alternative PEX, P-E-X, has a lot of phthalates. What do phthalates do? Watch my previous video, videos, lots of videos I've done on phthalates, lowering testosterone, causing infertility, increasing depression, on and on and on. So are phthalates a problem with plastic PEX piping? Let's look at the research. 2016, the end of 2016, I've got a study here. It's called Transfer of Phthalates from C polyvinyl chloride, CPVC. That's also used sometimes cheaply for piping water into homes. So there's copper, PVC, or PEX. And cross-linked polyethylene pipe, that's PEX, into drinking water. Now, anytime you hear the word polyethylene, that means polyethylene terephthalate, phthalate. And oftentimes scientists will tell you, and these are you know, good intentioned scientists, they'll say, oh, you know, polyethylene terephthalate does not leach phthalates because it's cross-linked together, just like BPA. They used to say BPA, that doesn't leach BPA because it's all cross-linked and then, oops, we find it leaches. Let's look at this study. Um, in recent years, the use of PEX pipe has increased dramatically. Definitely true. A lot of people are using it. Super convenient because, you know, with copper, you have to drill holes in the wall. You can't bend it. You know, it's a lot harder because you have to put all these joints in things. Yet, the adverse potential for leaching phthalates, which are endocrine disrupting compounds associated with adverse reproductive effects on humans, among other things, I would add, but that's what they say, reproductive effects. It's a huge one. Infertility, huge. Has not been examined. This is the end of 2016, almost 2017. Nobody's even looked at this. People have been putting in PECs for ages. Not really ages, but at least over a decade. And they're finally saying, oh, whoops, we should probably look at the phthalate exposure. Let's look at it. In this study, the potential of PCV, PVC, CPVC, uh, again, PVC uh, has, uh, and, and they compared PEX, red, blue, and heat PEX piping. There's three different kinds of PEX piping um, to leach phthalates. They looked at six different phthalates. They looked at water that was in the pipe for two, eight, and 48 hours. All right, some different time points. And here's crazy thing. Temperature and time were not significant factors in phthalate leaching. It's kind of counterintuitive, but you know, it's a short amount of time, this water's sitting in the pipes like it does at your home, right? It sits in there overnight in those pipes, you turn the water on, it comes out. Um, here's the ranges. Here's the punchline. Significantly higher concentrations of these various phthalates were observed in PVC pipe between about 252 nanograms per liter, 250, to 18,000 nanograms per liter. That's PVC, yeah, we know PVC leaches a ton of phthalates. It's a huge concern. It's screwing up our oceans, for goodness sake. So 250 to 18,000. All right, what about PEX? Well, blue PEX, 140 nanograms per liter to 459. That's high, 140 to 459. Red PEX, 188 to 881. Heat PEX, 162 to 169 nanograms per liter. Nanograms per liter. So what's the range? What's, what's a relative value? In men, testosterone, excuse me, estrogen is about 20 nanograms per liter. 20, the same units. And in women, it's about 20 to 400. It's not that much of a difference. It depends on the time of the month. But when you start talking about hundreds of nanograms per liter of phthalates, we're talking about a physiological effect on your body, an impact, a problem, in my opinion. And here's their conclusion. Phthalate exposure from drinking water via PVC or PEX is low compared to other dietary sources. So they kind of rationalize it and say, ah, people are okay with PEX, just switch from PVC. 
But in my opinion, who cares about the conclusion? This happens all the time. This happened with my fluoride research. You know, I was doing videos on fluoride way back when I started this because I started looking into it. And you find all this data that shows fluoride is pretty much useless. It's very harmful. It's neurotoxic. And you know, there's no reason to have these high levels of fluoride. It doesn't protect your teeth. But then the conclusion in those same papers, they find it doesn't protect your teeth, but then they make the conclusion that you should still use fluoride anyway. If you read those papers, it's insane. And that's kind of what they do with phthalates. They say, yeah, the levels are really high, crazy high compared to 20 nanograms per liter. Compared to your natural estrogen levels, these levels are high, you know, hundreds of nanograms per, per liter, hundreds compared to 20. And what's the conclusion? Yeah, your exposure is not too bad compared to CV PVC. Switch to copper if you can. If you can't, you've got to filter that water that you're drinking. It's insane that people don't. In the next episode, I want to talk about laundry detergent and continue talking about estrogens a little bit before we switch back to testosterone. <laughs>